Saturday's game, uh, I think both teams expended a lot of energy because of the physicality of it. Um, and then, uh, you know, going into the third period yesterday, uh, you know, with the game tied 1-1, we talked about going out uh, and, uh, you know, for 20 minutes trying to win as many 50-50 battles because there was going to be a bunch of them within that last 20 minutes. And, you know, if our percentages were higher than the, our opponents, uh, we're going to have the puck a little bit more and we're going to get an opportunity and we just needed to capitalize on. So we got our power play, uh, you know, Sid and Andy Pankowski made a nice play and uh, we capitalized on that opportunity and did what we needed to do to finish off. So it was a hard fought victory. Uh, I know the players were tired after the game yesterday. The nice part was uh, it was over at 2.15. So they had a quite a bit of time to, to recover and uh, enjoy uh, or hopefully enjoy the Packer game. It didn't work out that way, but uh, they were all running to watch the Packer game. So I'll uh, get a chance to rest uh, a little bit yesterday, uh, our day off today, and we'll pr start preparing for Mankato uh, Friday night uh, tomorrow at practice. Mark, did they feel like playoff games, the intensity, the, the, the physicality you're talking about, and, and maybe a good <laughs> reminder of what this, what's to come? I had visions of uh, you know, my freshman year as a player going up there and getting involved in a brawl uh, in warm-ups. Uh, then as a coach going up there and the intensity and you know, the way the games uh, were played uh, back when I was coaching, uh, I had visions of it. But it was physical. Uh, there was a lot of intensity, especially in uh, uh, Saturday's game. Uh, you know, some players were down. Some players got hurt. Uh, and it just seemed that uh, you know it was going to be a physical game for the entire afternoon, which it was. And you know, and you come back yesterday afternoon, you're not sure what the game's going to look like. But uh, you know, there were some plays in yesterday games, the same thing, where players went down, players got hurt. Uh, there was a lot of scrums along the boards. There was a lot of contact. Uh, our fans were a little hostile in both games, so. Uh, there was a lot of things going on, and uh, it was reminded me of old-time hockey, as I called it. So it was fun. Uh, you know, if you wanted to be successful, you had to get involved. Uh, and uh, there were going to be some things that were going to going on, going on that uh, normally we don't see in our game. But, uh, you know, that's why we drop the puck and play. You never know what's going to happen or how the game's going to go. Brian, if you didn't know your team was tough already, did you learn that it was after this past weekend? And is that a good thing as you move along here? I think, uh, you know, every game you play, you can learn some things about your team. Uh, you know, we haven't been in that type of physical game all season. So uh, we showed a lot of resilience yesterday in the third period. We showed a lot of heart and character and you know, ability to, to do what we needed to do to try to find an opportunity and then capitalize on it. And I complimented the group, uh, you know, after the game for doing that because, as I said, uh, you know, for five periods, uh, both teams expended a lot of energy. And we, you know, we were willing to go out there and pay the price that last 20 minutes and figure out how to win a game. So very proud of the group. Andy, Mark, as a coach in women's hockey for a long time, you know where that line is, where it's okay to be physical and w what it's like to cross that line. Did the play this weekend cross that line at any point? And if so, how did you handle that with your team? Well, as I went into the game yesterday, uh, uh, as the game started, uh, they dropped the puck. I told Jackie, my assistant, I'm going to be in a happy place today. I'm not going to get mad at the referees. Uh, you know, and that lasted about, I don't know, three minutes. But uh, the thing about our game, you know, I think whether you're Wisconsin or, or North Dakota or whoever we're playing against, uh, I think the safety part of it is the most important. And uh, whether I'm coaching and going against the other team's coach, uh, and the referees, everybody has to work together to make sure we have an environment of safety. And uh, there are probably three incidents in Saturday's game that crossed the line. And uh, you just have to watch the game or have, have watched the game. And uh, generally, when those plays uh, happen, everybody in the building sees them. And so it's our job as coaches to educate our players and teach our players not to cross that line. If they do, we need to hold them accountable. And the same thing with the referees. If somebody crosses a line, we need to hold them accountable and just to make sure that's uh, not the way the game's designed to be played. And, you know, there are going to be consequences if you do cross that line. Uh, and then in yesterday's game, uh, you know, uh, there are probably at least one or two that, you know, players cross the line.
uh, you know, leaders, captains, you know, they, they can say things, but they have to do things, you know, to, to gain the respect or maybe more respect from their teammates. Is Sidney McKibben doing that? Not just because of what she did this past weekend or even yesterday, but just uh, overall this season? I think overall, uh, you know, she's done a great job with this group. Obviously, the expectations are high, uh, which brings, you know, pressure on a lot of different scenarios that uh, that we're involved in. And uh, I think if you asked all the players, uh, you know, who's in control of the locker room, who's the leader in the locker room, you know, they'll look right at Sid. Obviously, she's our captain. But I think, you know, a lot of little things that, that happen behind the scene on a daily basis that she's able to take charge of and the players respect her for doing it. Uh, has kept everybody focused and overall uh, it's been a real good consistent effort by everybody for most of the season so uh, we're very fortunate uh, as I've called her you know she's the ultimate professional she's got great habits uh, she understands uh, what she has to do to prepare and goes about her business in a very professional manner and I think it reflects and other people watch her and I think it helps the other players as they prepare for games so she's done a great job and Certainly very proud of what she's been able to do up to this point. And as she scores a goal and gets a second goal in the game winner yesterday, it's fun to see those individuals get rewarded for the things that they've been able to do and help our program. What are you expecting out of Mankato this weekend? Uh, you know, we'll look at video. Uh, I saw some of their game uh, this morning already. And, uh, you know, they're playing much better than they did uh, uh, when we played them up in, uh, in Mankato. Uh, uh, earlier in November, and so uh, as we saw with North Dakota, they were playing much better than uh, uh, they showed us uh, and when we played against them up in Grand Forks. So each team in our league's gotten better. Uh, I think their speed has gotten better and their ability to defend has gotten better. So there'll be some challenges ahead of us, and uh, again, we'll get ourselves organized tomorrow at practice and prepare ourselves uh, for the upcoming opponent Friday night at 7.